Has the market come too far too fast, especially in the light of the high unemployment rate? Let's bring in John Buckingham of Al Frank Asset Management. He describes himself as a long-term optimist, and he's a value player who says he wants people to question the legitimacy of the rally. Let's get his views. John joins us from Laguna Beach, California. John Buckingham, welcome to the program. Hi, Pim. How are you doing? I'm good, John. Now, you want to question the, uh, the rally that we're having in U.S. equities, and I think it's because you're a contrary investor to a certain extent, and you always get a little bit worried when sentiment gets optimistic. Tell us about it. Right. Well, it's interesting. You know, we've come so far so fast in, uh, in you know, if you look back to March 9th and how, how far the market has come. You know, we're at, at uh, a massive bull market if you measure a bull market as a 20 percent advance. And yet there's not the kind of euphoria that you might think there would be. In fact, if you look at equity mutual fund flows, uh, they're going in the wrong direction. Money is uh, leaving them as, as quickly as it can, and it's heading over to bond funds. So there's just not a lot of excitement about equities. And we notice that as well among our, our mutual fund shareholders, our, our subscribers to our Prudent Speculator newsletter. We're just seeing a lot of uh, people who are, are questioning the strength of this. And of course, it's hard to blame them after what you went through in 2008. Uh, but that factor, in my view, is a, a big reason why I think stocks still have some room to go, is that we just don't see the kind of optimism you'd expect. Now, uh, John, uh, give us a little background for earnings. I mean, we've set the tone a little bit, perhaps, with Alcoa earnings, Pepsi earnings. We're going to get some technology earnings, as we mentioned. Those will come next week. Uh, but what do you feel is the earnings picture, and compare that to what you see in the general economy with the uh, economy's earnings, the economy's results, right? Rather. Well, that's the interesting thing as well, is that expectations for earnings, in my view, are still pretty low. Management uh, teams have done a great job of setting a low bar, and it's kind of easy to, to step across it. You know, Alcoa's numbers blew away expectations, although, you know, they were hardly good if you wanted to compare them to where you might hope they'd be in, in years past. So the earnings picture, in, in my view, is likely to be supportive of stocks. Um, I'm not suggesting that they're all going to beat expectations like Alcoa did. Uh, but uh, we're still expecting something like 23 to 25 percent year-over-year declines in, in earnings. But yet, uh, as long as earnings continue to beat expectations, I think you'll see stock prices uh, do well. All right, let's and, you know, Sorry, go ahead. I beg your pardon, John. Well, I, I was also going to say that when you, when you look at stocks um, today, and you know, we, we've actually analyzed you know, a, a newsletter portfolio uh, that we have, which is our, called TPS Portfolio, has a 240 basis point yield on the stocks that are in it, and yet you're getting five basis points today on a money market fund. So equities are attractive, uh, in my view, uh, based on the fact that we're in a low interest rate environment, and right now we're certainly in a low inflation rate environment. I'm glad you mentioned this idea of uh, low interest rate environment because that I want to turn your attention to Bristol Myers. The indicated dividend yield there is about five and a half percent. The stock has done nothing so far this year. It's down actually three percent year to date. Bristol Myers, are you a buyer? Oh, absolutely. We like uh, a lot of the pharmaceutical companies, and it's you know we're value guys, and we want to buy stocks that have been ignored and are unloved. And uh, the, the big pharmaceutical companies are certainly facing some issues with patent expirations, litigation, um, all sorts of, of woes, if you will, including Washington, uh, perhaps uh, with regulatory issues. But the valuations are very attractive. Uh, Bristol's trading around 11 times earnings and is yielding that 5.5%, as you said. And we, we do know that they have patent expiration issues uh, coming up in uh, 2012 to 2015, that time frame. But they've done a good job, in our view, of going out and uh, making some uh, um, acquisitions, making some licensing deals to uh, uh, develop new block plus blockbuster drugs that we think will come down the pike and, and certainly help them. But today you're not paying much for this earnings stream and you have these companies in our view that have solid balance sheets and are likely to remain uh, uh, very profitable for the foreseeable future. And of course you have the demographic trends as people are aging, they're continuing to require more and more medication. I know it's tough for them to afford it right now, but uh, I think that pharmaceuticals deserve a place in a broadly diversified portfolio. And would you wait until the earnings come out? We're looking at October the 22nd for the quarterly results for Bristol Myers. Do you leg in before the report or do you wait and see what happens? Well, we already own it, so um, in terms of, of, of should somebody be buying it, yes, I, I wouldn't necessarily wait for the earnings. 
yeah, you could if, if you thought earnings were going to be weak. Uh, wait on that, uh, that trade, but in my view, I do think, generally speaking, earnings are going to be pretty good relative to expectations, and I wouldn't be uh, waiting to buy after earnings. I would go ahead and buy it before. And keep in mind, we're looking out three to five years with this investment, right. not you know, three to five minutes.